Welcome to this episode of the Structural Engineering Channel, a podcast focused on helping structural engineering professionals stay up to date on technical trends in the field and to help them succeed in their careers and lives. In this episode, we will be speaking with Katerina Pesora, a structural engineer at Pell Frischman, about the pivotal role that soft skills play in achieving success in complex engineering projects. I'm your host, Rachel Holland. Now let's jump into the conversation of the week with Katerina. This episode of the Structural Engineering Channel is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the PE Structural Exam. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE Structural Exam the first time. PPI's PE Structural course is fully updated and taught with October 2021 code references and includes new editions of their PE Structural books. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. PPI has helped engineers achieve their licensing goals since 1975. Check out PPI today at PPI, the number two, pass.com to see all of the resources available for PE structural exam prep. Again, that's PPI, the number two, P-A-S-S.com. Hi, Katerina. Uh, welcome to the show. Can you tell us a little bit about your background and what you do on a daily basis? Hi, Rachel. Thank you for having me on the show. <laughs> um, so I'm a structural engineer. I graduated from the University of uh, Derby that was in collaboration with a college uh, back in Athens and Greece uh, in 2016. And then I did my master to the in the University of uh, Manchester uh, in structural engineering while my bachelor was in uh, civil engineering. Then I worked for one and a half year in Greece and then I moved over to London in the UK where I work for four years now. I work in Pell Frischmann, a company that has many offices around the UK. Uh, we work uh, on building structures. I work on building structures, but the company does a lot of uh, other stuff, civils, drainage, geotech, etc. On my daily basis, I work uh, usually uh, on one or two projects, uh, residential or commercial. Most of my experience is on that uh, category. And I have worked also with new and refurbishment projects. <laughs> okay. Uh, this uh, four years. <laughs> so you you went to school in Greece, then in England, then you moved back to Greece to work, and then back to England to work. Exactly. Okay. Uh, for one and a half year, I I, I was back. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Yeah. So one of the things I wanted to ask you about today is a little bit about soft skills. So I'm curious how. Um, you know, communication, leadership, all the interpersonal skills, how do you feel that those contribute to success in our field? So in general, the soft skills is something that I believe every engineer should have. Uh, and actually in the chartership, I'm not sure uh, how it's in America, but uh, in the UK, we have the Institute of Civil Engineers. Um, so it's the ICE. Uh, it has seven attributes. Three of the attributes are uh, in soft skills, management and leadership, interpersonal skills and communication, and the professional commitment, which we can talk about it in a bit. So it's really a key point of uh, a, a structure engineer, soft skills. Um, I believe the communication is the key to our profession, even though you can be as good as technical, but if you don't communicate it well, it doesn't really make you a very maybe successful professional. Maybe you don't come across really well or you cannot um, pass your ideas to others. With regards to leadership in daily basis, we need to coach people, mentor them, and maybe younger engineers will come to the company and you would have to um, communicate your goals and your visions and teach them how to do um, some stuff. And it doesn't have to be with a, a leadership position, like I'm not in a leadership position. With regard to communication, usually you, you need to be good in the writing, uh, such as emails and reports and um, to communicate your 
thoughts in a written way, but also like your facial expression, your presentation skills, the cues you are giving when you are talking. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to inter- interpersonal skills, I believe it's more about being friendly, be, has a, having a positive attitude, being diplomatic when disagreeing. Well, <laughs> when you accept criticism, you have to do it with a mature way, <laughs> let's say. Uh, or when you're giving criticism in a more supportive uh, way. I think yeah. this is something that helps a lot in the, the day tasks you have to do. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, especially in like a technical profession, you could have so much knowledge inside of your head. And if you don't have the ability to communicate that out, nobody, nobody will know. Nobody will know what you know. Exactly, exactly. And it's important to be, uh, to communicate well, uh, in order to be influential, um, to communicate your thoughts. It's like the bridge between you and the client or the design team. Uh, really this this is it (laughs) so then for you personally which of all of those soft skills do you find uh are are most valuable in in your role um well because we work in teams uh i would say teamwork is um the maybe the most important thing um to be able to work with different disciplines such as uh, architects mep um the mechanical engineers also to to have a a view of the whole the whole picture as we say uh, meaning that when you're in a diverse group of architects um, or the design team you need to take a perspective of what they're thinking and their design and understand also their needs and uh, their goal then it would be the soft motivation uh, meeting deadlines uh, managing your time good between projects, especially when you're working to multiple projects. Take responsibility as well <laughs> when it has to. Um, and also, I would say be flexible and adaptive in terms of when work under pressure on the deadlines, which is something that we do a lot of the time. Um, but again, working uh, in a project will have a lot of changes in our field. So we need to be flexible and adapt to the changes um, and be able to find the solutions we, uh, right. we can. Yeah, I think you go ahead. those three, I would say. Okay. I was going to say at the beginning there, you talked a little bit about teamwork, right? And I'm yeah. curious, um, obviously, uh, for for structural engineering projects, effective communication is really important uh, within a team, right? So so how do you ensure clear and effective communication with your team members? And then obviously the extension of that, the clients and the stakeholders on the project. Um, I would say simplicity is the key. You need to communicate uh, essential information. So at some depending to who you talk to. So you need to know your audience. Um, if you talk to the client, maybe you would skip some technical parts. Uh, but when you talk to your team, obviously you can go into more detail. Uh, but at the end of the day, you need to know what the other person needs to have. For example, the needs of the other person. And then you communicate, make sure that they know that their outcome. Um, and they know how they will affect them. So... It doesn't mind. It doesn't matter if you say the most technical part. All they care about is how they will affect them. So I would say, in simple words, uh, communicate effectively <laughs> uh, what you need to say. Yeah, perfect. I I was just listening to um, John Maxwell. I don't know if you know him, but he he has a a book, um, the sixteen the 16 undeniable laws of communication. I was just listening to something online with him and he's, he was saying very similarly, like know your audience and then, you know, take it to that level. So if, if you, if you can keep it simple, you know, and and sometimes you have to go up a little bit, like depending on the audience, but um, that's, yeah. Actually, uh, one of the attributes again (laughs) on the communication uh, is that, you need to communicate effectively in with technical and non-technical technical members. So you need to, this is a skill that 
because in university you really focus on the technical stuff and you forget how to speak to non-technical people and it's yeah. something also you can find with your friends usually when they it's a very good practice when you talk with your friends about your work and when you see that you're losing them <laughs> it means that you went into a lot of detail that maybe it shouldn't have to be right. you know so detailed <laughs> totally understand that yeah yeah um, in practice you perfect you perfect it yeah what about with um so again like a huge part of our profession is problem solving right so can you share an example with our audience about how soft skills help you to tackle you know, more complex engineering challenges? Yeah, definitely. So uh, this happens all the day, all the time. <laughs> um, every Everything that comes through, it's, uh, it's a problem that needs to be solved. As an example, we had some vertical penetrations into an RC beam. They, they had some existing um, openings on the archive drawings that we thought. And that meant that the reinforcement would be also had a gap so we can pass our uh, openings in the same locations. So in reality, when we stripped out the building, this didn't happen. The openings weren't there or they were smaller or they were in the wrong place. So nothing in comparison to what happened to uh, the archive drawings. Um, we had to have a survey of the rebar that showed that the reinforcement didn't have any uh, distance between it, so we can pass the openings. It was just a normal beam. And that meant that those openings would have to either, we had to, to strengthen the, the beam or moved. Um, but because those openings were really important for the risers of the building, we couldn't move them as a first option. We had to, and also we did have to have them in that location. So what happened was we came up with a solution of uh, strengthening the beam with a steel plate and on the underside of the build beam. That when the cost consultant came, he said it's a very expensive solution. So we had a te team uh, meeting with a client, with a design team, and we ended up moving some of the openings into the slab, meaning that the architects had to compromise and uh, lose some of their lobby space. But this is, this is just an example of how uh, you need to find a way to move forward, make informed decisions. For example, the client was aware that we either have to pay more to have the space that he wanted or would have to compromise on the space that he wanted and gain some money out of the strengthening. Uh, but at the end of the day, the communication is uh, what helped him make an informed decision. He knew all the parameters and we communicated uh, effectively all the structural implications that this will have, every option. So um, it's critical thinking uh, and yeah, find a way to move forward, uh, uh, compromise. This is key. Not There's no perfect solution. So I, I think, think any thing. any of our listeners that have worked on uh, existing buildings can relate to that story, right? You, yeah, it's, there's always just things that you discover during the process that aren't a lot of you planned. Yeah. yeah. So, covers. <laughs> so that that's a perfect um, kind of segue into this other question I was going to ask. When you have these unexpected project changes, um, how or even just demanding deadlines, things like that, how do you stay motivated and how do you stay adaptable in those in those scenarios? Um, you need to communicate with the client and set the expectations with the client. Uh, make sure that you have realistic deadlines because sometimes this happens. There's a lot of pressure in the program, but the program from the beginning doesn't seem possible. Uh, ensure you have a clear goal. Uh, prioritize your priorities again and again all the time. So your task, you need to prioritize them all the time. So if something comes up, you need to say, okay, this item can wait 
this is more important and has to go now. But it's uh, very important to have same priorities with the client and you communicate those priorities. Usually it's good to ask also for a priority list uh, from the client. And then seek support and collaboration from your team. Uh, maybe somebody can help, somebody's more light, and they can provide some assistance, uh, break down tasks, um, divide the, the, the tasks into smaller um, tasks so you can uh, manage them and have a list, <laughs> a <Right>. long list. <laughs> uh, I think. <laughs> Me too. That's a common theme with uh, people that we have on this show, just so you know, I think it might be an engineering thing. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, however, I do love them, and yeah, I do have uh, all my tasks break down, so break down, so I can keep track. Um, but yeah, I would say definitely the team thing helps collaboration. <laughs> right. Yeah. When when you have um a conflict or a disagreement with your team or your or your or with a client, um. Are there any like strategies that you use to navigate those or um, like ba based on your experience, like how, how do you best handle those? Um, I would say in the beginning, uh, what I do, I try to build a relationship before the conflict. So uh, when, when things are good, we try to have a really good relationship with the client, with the design team, everything is great very friendly, positive environment. And we don't make a big deal about small problems. So when the bigger problem comes, we have a really nice relationship and we can really go through that easier. Um, but when the when the conflict comes, uh, you need to stay calm, keep calm, no need to be aggressive, uh, whatever happens, you know, don't take it personally. <laughs> Uh, and emotionally, don't get uh, emotional. Um, I would say maintain respect and try to make the other person to understand that you have heard them and you saw their point of view. And now what you're going to do is try to find a solution that works for everyone at some level. Maybe somebody we have we have to compromise, but uh, usually all of us compromise, <laughs> and we take we find a common ground and helpful solutions. Um, yeah, to all parties involved, and the client and us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that's a huge part of it is making sure that the other person knows that you're you hear them, you see where they're coming from, you're yeah. taking you're taking everything that they're saying into consideration. I think that's a big thing. People just want to be heard, right? So uh, Yes, exactly. And you need to communicate that you try to be helpful and you're not trying to create problems. So this is actually really appreciated uh, by the others. I found mm -hmm. that when you, when you try to find actually solutions that are helpful, um, they appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What about... Um, how, okay, so as a structural engineer, how do you balance, you know, the highly technical kind of side of our work with the soft skills that are required uh, to effectively communicate and and then like we've been talking about, you know, collaborate with these diverse stakeholders in these projects? So, um, as I said, simplicity is a key. You need to understand what your audience care about and then how this will impact them. So in simple words, stay focused and explain the reason behind your design, if it works or not, um, but without going into maybe some details um, of your design, maybe they don't care about it, they care about the outcome. So you need to know what they care about and this is how you, you can say to them. Sometimes you need to tell them exactly the reason why it doesn't work. For example, we cannot use uh, I-beam because of torsion. Uh, you can be more specific if usually it's an engineer or um, somebody of the design team. But when it's the client, you don't really want to go into so much detail. 
maybe they won't know. Sometimes they they do and they want to know more. So some clients are more into um, this knowledge. They've done it many times before and they want to hear the reason. But I would say keep it simple and then as as the conversation goes, you can see how technically you can go. Uh, but usually provide the essential information of your design. Yeah. I mean, I think that's how it is, right? So it's like everybody that comes, like some people are going to be more worried about the finances. Some people are going to be worried about the aesthetic design or the layouts. And it's like, it's our job to be worried about the structural part of it. So it's, you know, again, just letting them know um, what they need to know in regards exactly. to the design. And, and also have a principle, I would say from the beginning, for example, um, try to communicate the goal oh, let's not touch the structure yet. In, uh, if it's an existing building, for example, but just, you know, just uh, keep it simple, um, set your goals. And then if you have to change some stuff and solve some problems, you can be also helpful. But uh, in, in, some, in some occasions, you have to uh, respect your technical aspects, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Katerina, my final question for you is um, what advice or tips do you have for aspiring structural engineers uh, in order for them to develop and enhance their soft skills throughout their careers? Um, In general, the soft skills are in an ongoing development progress. Uh, You have to you have to communicate that um, and embracing the uh, growth mindset. So find a way to to develop your professional development, like to to work on that during your career. A very good way to break the ice. It's going, I would say, going to networking events, uh, meeting other parties. Um, attend industry events in general that helps a lot with the collaboration skills gain different perspective in uh, in the whole project progress (laughs) and then maybe seek feedback from your mentor that's also very good can tell you some maybe something that you never notice about yourself Um, that's a very very good one yeah i think it's perfect we're always um you know, taking CEUs to constantly stay current with our technical knowledge. And we can't forget that the soft skills is a, it's an ongoing uh, developmental process too. We should always be seeking to like get better in those areas as well. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And it's the key to to collaborate. I I think, yeah, Yeah. Uh, it's very, it's in our job all the time with people in even our team with may be uh, combined from I don't know five or six people so right this is a this is a profession absolutely well thank you so much Katerina for um, being a guest on our show today we've really enjoyed having you thank you so much Rachel I hope you enjoyed the episode today we'd love to hear your feedback comments and our questions to leave them please visit structuralengineeringchannel.com There, you will find the summary of the key points discussed in today's episode, which is episode number 105, as well as any links to any resources or websites that we mentioned during the episode. Don't forget to subscribe to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Until next time, we wish you the best in all of your structural engineering endeavors.